Is this getting better or not? That's just muting. Okay. Well, I interrupted myself. Grace and peace to you from our God who creates us from Jesus, who saves us and from the Holy Spirit, who breathes life in and among us. We thank you for your grace as we continue to adjust to some technological updates in here. Oh, room controls. Oh, mic adjust. Look at this. Learning. Oh, dear. Wait, now I'm just gone. Okay. What? I just turned the volume down and then it muted. I wonder if something happened back in the room. Um, how we doing back there? No, it just cut out. Oh, wait, is it back? It's back. All right. I'm just not going to touch anything. I, I think it's back. It sounds like it's back. It's fuzzy. We will address, address the fuzziness later, but I'm not going to touch that. Okay. I'm just, just not going to touch it. All right. Well, on my drive to work this morning, I learned that today, March 24th, is Equal Pay Day. That is the day when taken as a whole, on average, women will have needed to work this far into tw in the U.S. In, uh, women, on the whole, will have needed to work this far into 2021 to uh, make what men, what the average man earned in 2020. And according to EqualPayDay.org, that day for Black women is not until August 3rd. For Native American women, it's September 8th. And for Latina women, it's October 21st. And so it seemed especially right, Rose. Yeah, it's just like one of those stats you don't really even want to know because it's so overwhelmingly uh, it seems so overwhelming to overcome that. And yet, here we are. I am grateful to be gathered with all of you women uh, and men and others joining us in this room and online. And so it seems especially fitting today to lift up a couple stories from courageous and faithful women, one from our biblical family of stories and one from our good Sam and Sanford family. Uh, the first story you'll hear is a story of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And then in a bit, I'll introduce you to Veronica Walters, a faithful woman from our Good Sam family. In the liturgical calendar, fun fact, if you didn't know this, tomorrow, March 25th, marks the Feast of the Annunciation. That is the day when we especially hear and remember the story of the angel Gabriel's visit to a teenage woman named Mary who lived in a little town called Nazareth. If you do this math, if you do the math, March 25th is nine months before Christmas Day, December 25th. And so that is why that is the day we celebrate the Annunciation. If you're learning this for the first time, I will tell you, I just figured this out like a year ago. So this is like brand new information to me. Nine months. Who knew? All right. March 25th. And so um, in that vein, we are going to hear that story today. This is the story of the, Annun the Annunciation from the first chapter of Luke's gospel. It's one of my favorite stories in the whole of the Bible. This was the text from my ordination. So this is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to the will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. 
Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends the reading. Some of us around National Campus and others, if you, uh, if we were able to mail them out to you as requested, uh, are going through this little Lenten devotional book. Don't worry if you're not, you are not missing out on any of this. There's no prerequisite for anything I'm about to say. But that is to say, in uh, today's entry of this devotional book inspired by the Roman Catholic priest and theologian, the late Henry Nouwen. The theme today is ordinary people and the devotional entry in today's, uh, in today's entry in this book alludes to this very story that we've just heard. As we heard in the story, the angel Gabriel tells Mary that she has been chosen by God to bear the savior of the world. No small call. Mary is an ordinary person called by God. But even more shocking to me in this story, and more shocking that the fact that God calls this ordinary person, more shocking is the fact that Mary says yes. Mary, who has no economic capital or social status going into this moment, Mary, who will surely risk losing Joseph, the one to whom she is engaged and the one who is likely her only ticket to a stability of many forms. Even though Mary risks losing so much and already has so little, she says yes. Last week, I got the chance to meet virtually, of course, meet Veronica Walters, who serves the Good Samaritan Society as the hospice administrator and director of nursing in El Paso, Texas. Veronica was one of four employees selected from our Good Sam family for the Sanford Brand Ambassador Celebration a few weeks ago. Some of you may have heard about this through email communications and on Inside Sanford. This was a once-in-a-lifetime event. Veronica and the other brand ambassadors, I believe there were 20 in total from across the Sanford family, four were from Good Sam. The ambassadors were given suitcases in their workplaces in the middle of their days. These mysterious suitcases included information about a super secret trip to which they were invited and all of their accommodations had been handled. The event they were being invited to was specifically for the heroes of the Sanford and Good Sam family who had been extraordinarily faithful to their calls over the past year of the pandemic. The invitees were told to pack their bags for this mysterious event. They were given the choice of whether to accept. As I told Veronica, I would have said, no, this is like my worst nightmare to be invited. I, when I told my husband about this, he was like, Ooh, you would have hated that, which is true. But luckily Veronica is not me. And she said, yes, after a year of saying yes, to her call over and over again. She said yes again to this invitation. The group met up in Nashville, which was the super secret destination. And of course, all the while COVID vaccinations were taken into account and all precautions were taken. The ultimate surprise and gift of the trip was a private concert by the group Lady A, formerly known as Lady Antebellum. And during this private concert, which was at the Grand Ole Opry, the group debuted a song they had written specifically for this group. Their inspiration for the song was the letters of recommendation written about each of these individual brand ambassadors. Veronica's own letter 
included the faith and wisdom, the words that have carried her through the past year. And that especially was the sentence, the refrain that she told herself over and over, this too shall pass. That refrain was written in her letter, and that's, that sentence itself became the primary inspiration for Lady A's song. If you haven't seen the video, please do. If you, uh, all of you, of course, obviously in this room are employees, so you can check it out on Inside Sanford. If you're watching online, you can check out the social media platforms for Sanford, and I believe Good Sam, and the video is shared there. I do recommend I learned the hard way. Make sure that you have Kleenex nearby while you are watching. As I talked with Veronica last week, I was in awe as I expected to be. Over the past year, when I have mostly been able to keep myself and my family very safe from risk of exposure to the virus, Veronica and her team in El Paso never stopped visiting their residents and patients, our residents and patients. Veronica said the only time they didn't visit someone was if that person, the recipient of their visit, was not comfortable having visitors. And it was a request they always, of course, respected. But otherwise, over the past year, God continued to call Veronica and her team into the work of health, healing, and comfort. And Veronica and her team continued to say yes. As the author of today's devotional reflection in Steadfast Love in this little booklet writes, quote, Jesus continues to choose ordinary people, people like you and me, to accomplish extraordinary things for the good and growth of the kingdom. Jesus molds and moves us by his word and spirit to be his voice and hands and feet, end quote. And I would like to push just a little bit further to say that maybe the profound word here for us today is not so much that God chooses ordinary people like Mary and Veronica and you and me, but maybe the really profound word is that God tells us that we are not ordinary, that we were never ordinary in the first place, that we are worthy of extraordinary calls. Each of us is called and gift in extraordinary ways. After all, Mary had the extraordinary courage to say yes to the delivery and call of the angel Gabriel. And so did Veronica have this extraordinary courage to continue answering her call. For the faithful and inspiring service of these women today, I give thanks. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for the extraordinary faith and gifts of Mary and Veronica and so many other women and men and persons who serve you each day through Good Sam and Sanford. We give you thanks for the extraordinary gifts of our employees and those we serve in Alma, Nebraska and Arapaho, Nebraska for all who serve through the Department of Neurology and those they serve. We ask for your peace and presence for all who are living with mental illness and their family and friends. Oh God, we give thanks for all occasions for celebration. We give thanks today for Jake's successful lung transplant. We celebrate this new life that he is experiencing as are all who care for and love him. We lift up all private prayer requests in the basket and any we may hold in our hearts. Remind us of the extraordinary gifts you have given each of us this day. Empower us to serve you in the moments and hours and days to come. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.